in the northern mountains on the island of New Guinea, in the cloud forest, lives an elusive animal found nowhere else in the world. Hello. <laughs> With an endearing face and thick okay. fur, the Machis tree kangaroos of Papua New Guinea are only found on the island's Huan Peninsula, and they're endangered. Threats include a growing human population and subsistence hunting. Tree kangaroos for a long time have been part of the local diet. They are difficult to study because of the remoteness of their habitat, and they spend most of their lives high in the rainforest canopy, 70 to 100 feet above the ground. Just getting to their home isn't easy. First, the area is inaccessible by vehicle, so researchers need a small plane landing on a bumpy airstrip in the village of Yawan. Then, it's a two-day hike through dense forest, up and down steep mountain ridges. Even once you get there, they are extremely difficult to find. Local hunters and trackers provide the critical skills to locate these elusive animals. Dr. Lisa Daybeck is director of the Tree Kangaroo Conservation Program oh, based at Woodland Park Chris Zoo in Seattle. Oh, and then she'll hold, because that's what she did when she came down. She studied right? this endangered marsupial for more than 20 years. Tree kangaroos um, spend most of their time high up in the trees, and so we are not able to see what they're doing up there. That's why she's asked for the help of the National Geographic Critter Cam. This Critter Cam for the tree kangaroo is completely new. We've been working with National Geographic for the last few years trying to figure out a way to have a small enough Critter Cam to put on a tree kangaroo. It takes a team of experts for this project, scientists, veterinarians, and the local hunters. These are the local landowners who used to hunt tree kangaroos, but now they are helping us with our research. So they are the best people to find the tree kangaroos in the forest. Tree kangaroos really hide in the trees. You, you might be able to see that the, the moss on the trees are the very same color as the tree kangaroos themselves. And tree kangaroos tend to hide in the moss. And they look like plush toys up in the branches, but they're very well adapted for the cloud forests with the thick fur, and then they have long claws for climbing the trees, and then they have their long tail for balancing themselves. But they can also leap down from the trees onto the ground and not hurt themselves. It needs to be at the position like this. Okay. Because when one is spotted, there are no tranquilizer darts or anesthesia used. A hunter will climb the tree the kangaroo is on and coax it to leap to the ground. Below, other hunters clear brush and wait for the moment. It might go. It looks like there it goes. <laughs> Papua New Guinean Gabriel Porlock handles the captured male. He is the Tree Kangaroo Conservation Program Research Coordinator and a key figure in the local preservation effort. The captured animal is weighed and examined by veterinarian Carol Essen. And then the critter cam collar is fastened into place. All right. And then the animal is released. For the next few days, the animal will have a new role as a critter cam videographer. What the researchers found was more than they ever dreamed of seeing. It's way beyond my wildest imagination. It actually brought tears to my eyes. I mean, these animals go so high up in the, um, in the trees that you cannot know what they do unless you have a camera on them, and now we can see that. The Critter Cam recorder is on a timer, so it records short segments at different times of the day. Scratching. Grooming, eating. As he scales one old tree branch to another, you can see the lush vegetation, mosses and orchids, that serve as a smorgasbord. Some 90 different species of plants the tree kangaroo eats. 
And so you get this view all the way down to the ground from, it's probably about 100 feet up. And then it was sunrise. It was about 6 a.m. or so, because that's when we think that they feed. And in fact, that's when we saw in the video that he was feeding. But then he looked out and it was the sunrise, which was amazing. The team captured a second kangaroo. This one, a female they've been tracking for three years, named Trish. And this time, she has a baby Joey developing in her pouch. When Trish was set free with a camera, she collected video from a female perspective, including one segment where she is seen cleaning her pouch. The forest where these tree kangaroos live is pristine, and it will hopefully stay that way as the local population has agreed to set it aside as a conservation area. Daybeck helped enlist the local population that she says is crucial to the efforts to save this species. <laughs> this first Critercam tree kangaroo project was funded through the National Geographic Society Weight Grants yes. Program. This is an incredible tool. We can now see what the animals are eating up in the canopy, which we never could do before. We can see what how they're moving in the trees and at what time of day. That was great. The project was a success for tree kangaroo research and also a crucial test for the new Critter Cam. With this smaller system, Critter Cam will be opening windows into the hidden lives of many new species.